everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we are going to be starting our own mushroom patch. And you can see here, I've got a nice load of wood chips that came in from chipdrop.com. I wasn't able to really choose the specific species of wood, but it's really important when growing mushrooms here. I have some, some sawdust spawn of Strafaria rugosa amulata, aka a wine cap mushroom. And it's really important when you're choosing your species of mushroom to have the corresponding species of wood. Um, mushrooms like specific species, they like specific conditions. So it's really important to kind of emulate that and recreate that. So the mycelium in here, you can see this white stuff around the sawdust that this can then multiply itself throughout this patch that we're creating here. And it's real simple to create a patch. I'm going to show you guys two others that we created earlier this year. Um, but you can see we've laid down lots of cardboard. That was our first step. We got it nice and wet. You can even cut the cardboard in half, rip it apart, and expose those corrugations. Then we put down some straw. And unfortunately, this stuff here has been here for a while. So it's possible something's already come in here and colonized this already. Some other species of mushroom that I can't really see. You know, digging through this a little bit, I didn't see any um, mycelium activity. It's a pretty thin layer, so maybe we're okay. Um, also, the wood chips need to be fresh. All this stuff should really be fresh. If this is too old and it's been sitting around too long, some other species of mushroom can come in here and already colonize this wood. So it's really important to kind of eliminate competition, just like with our plants, our trees, eliminate all those weeds underneath, and that's going to eliminate that competition. Um, but, you know, I think things are maybe a little bit more lenient than we like to think, uh, at least in nature. That's what I have found in the past, that everything kind of can work itself out eventually. Um, but what we've done exactly is just put down the cardboard, put down the straw, and now we put down our sawdust spawn that we got in the mail and we got this, by the way, from a reputable source. This is from Paul Stamets up in Washington, Fungi Perfecti. It's really cheap, affordable. Um, it's crazy that people are buying sawdust in the mail, <laughs> if you think about it. But, um, you know, it's a nice service that he offers. And he has a, not, a lot of products up there on his website that uh, are all mushroom related that I also uh, am a big proponent of. But essentially, we've just scattered the the sawdust spawn, if you can kind of get in, by getting close and show you guys all these little pieces of sawdust and even wood chips that are larger pieces, I've just scattered this all throughout here. There's no real rhyme or reason. You don't want to go too thin. You, don't, you can go too thick, but you don't really want to go too thin. I think it's better to go thicker than thinner. And I'm going to put the rest of this in the bag when we're done the video. But and then the last step is really just to throw on wood chips. and. The more wood chips you can throw on, I think, inevitably, uh, the better that this is gonna break down because what you need is decaying wood, right? So what I've seen in the past is people put the cardboard down, then they put the wood, a layer of wood chips down, a thin layer of wood chips, then they put the sawdust down, and then on top of the sawdust, they put a pretty thickish layer of, of wood chips. And for me, it just makes sense because the, the wood needs to break down. If the wood starts to rot, the mycelium will then, well, actually the mycelium really aids in that whole process. So I guess that really doesn't matter too much, but essentially I'd rather have something wet. I'd rather have a lot of material on top to keep that moisture in, because that's really the key to getting this mycelium going, is to have a thick enough layer of mulch. You've ever noticed in your, some of your trees, guys, if you have a thin layer of, of mulch, nothing's really going on. Um, yeah, it does cover the soil, but I mean, look at this. This soil is basically bare on some of these trees. I didn't put down any mulch this year, except for some straw in the beginning of the season. And you can see it's really bare and really not a whole lot of activities going on under here. So if you get it down thick enough to emulate a forest, I think that's really gonna be key here. Now, let me show you guys a couple a big patch that I created of shiitake um, using sycamore as well. I mean, um, I've even heard by Paul Stamets, I think on his website, it says that you can use strafaria, the wine caps with straw. So if you don't have wood chips, you can get straw. 
Um, it's a good one to use with straw, so that's kind of why I put it over there in that location. But you can also see this just giant patch that we've created. We just put down tons of wood chips in here. Um, and this is basically two whole sawdust spawn bags that I got. Um, so one of shiitake over here to about, I don't know, about here or something like that. And then when the second bag goes all the way over here, down this way. So we're covering a pretty good area. And what I can do, what you can do, is take those bags, that sawdust spawn, and put it into like a separate container and continue that process, keep it at room temperature, keep it wet, the right moisture content, and the sawdust spawn, the mycelium in there, will start to replicate and propagate and spread. Um, so you can create yourself, if you wanna save some of this sawdust spawn, you can actually create your own. It's very difficult. I'm sure it's more difficult than it sounds. <laughs> but essentially what we've done here is pretty much the same thing as putting down cardboard, putting down a layer of wood chips, then putting down the sawdust, then putting down a really thick layer of wood chips in here. And if I dig in here, I hope that you can see some sort of activity. This has been actually going on now for three weeks or so. You can see right in there is that mycelium that's forming and hopefully that's the right mycelium <laughs> you know um, of the mushroom that we want and if i dig in here actually there it is right there there's the sawdust spawn that we put down a while ago so this is definitely working and it's not going to happen overnight guys this is going to take close to a year it depends on the species it depends on the wood it depends on the conditions it's just you know, I've seen, uh, I think Paul Stamets has a strain of shiitake or something that can happen in as little as three months, believe it or not. Additionally, I want to talk to you guys about, real quick, a mushroom that actually spawned, spawns in my backyard every year. And here's actually the bottom of it. I ripped it out instead of cutting it. This is chicken of the woods that spawns underneath, pretty much along the roots of my black cherry tree here and it really does taste like chicken I hear and I'm afraid to eat the damn thing because <laughs> it's wild in my backyard but it's been here for years I've noticed this mushroom honestly since I was a kid since I was you know a, a teenager I've been seeing this mushroom here every summer and it seems to come in at different times this year seemed a bit late I've always seen it I think more in the early summer um, and I never know what the hell it was I never understood that that was actually a mushroom until about last year and I realized oh my god that's a mushroom and that's also the chicken of the woods and I've identified it I've also talked to some people who also have identified it don't be picking wild mushrooms in your backyard and eating them but um, I'm pretty conf. I'm I'm 90. I'm 100% confident, but there's always that fear that it's not something, or you're gonna die. And I think that's a big fear that people have with all this. So my last step is really at this point with this particular patch is to throw on these wood chips, and we're pretty much done. Um, I don't know if you guys really want to see that. I don't think it's that necessary to show you guys, but. Um, this is kind of creating a mushroom patch, guys. And I think another way that people do this, and it's more common, to be honest, I think, is that they just take big logs. Get yourself big totems, you know, three foot long logs. And they can kind of even bury them a bit in the ground or they can stack them in a, a log cabin fashion. Um, is just get yourself big logs that are fresh. That's the key here. It's all gotta be fresh. And unfortunately, I can't choose to have logs. I, can't, I can only choose to just get the wood chips that I received of the species that I received. But if you know somebody or you have a tree in your area that's good for this kind of thing and you're cutting it down, use those logs to inoculate mushrooms. Um, all you do is take the log and drill a hole in the log get yourself some of that sawdust spawn you can also get plugs they sell these little plugs and you insert the plug into the hole that you drilled and then cover that hole up maybe with something you don't really even have to do that and then the plugs then start to colonize the entire log and then you have yourselves logs of mushrooms that are grown probably 
on a, a better material, a longer lasting material than some of these wood chips. You know, the wood chips break down quicker than a big log. So, um, and also I think there's some differences here when people talk about log grown mushrooms versus wood chip grown mushrooms and people I think just have better success with the logs overall and then it's easier um, colonizing them and all that. But definitely there's a big difference between a store-bought mushroom that was grown not on wood, not on fresh wood, not on wood chips or not on logs and in some kind of mushroom house somewhere. And it's just a huge difference in the quality and the flavor and even finding them in the wild is a really big difference. Um, so for me, it's worth it. And I love mushrooms. Um, they're extremely healthy for you. If you have heard of any of Paul Stamets' work, any of his talks that he's done, the guy is incredible. He is essentially the obsessed guy of mushrooms, you know, just like I'm the obsessed guy on figs. But this guy is a doctor, you know, and he's been doing this his whole life. He's definitely, in my mind, the leading expert on mushrooms. So, you know, you got to listen to what this guy has to say, especially the health benefits of it all. But this is the beginning here, guys. This is a, uh, it's really exciting for me. And I'm actually going to come in here on this side and put wood chips down all in this underneath these apple trees and underneath the kiwi vine here. And we don't have enough sawdust spawn, unfortunately, but I would inoculate the whole area. Uh, and maybe I will in future years. I had thought about putting um, strawberries down underneath in here, especially the June bears, because I think the June bears, I just really am a big fan of those. Um, when they all ripen their crop at the same time and they're kind of a, a bigger strawberry, um, you know, not all of them taste as great as Mar de Bois, but I figured put them under here, you only harvest them once a year and then that's it. But the issue I've been finding with the strawberries is that, yeah, they're growing, but it's a lot of work to come in here and harvest all these strawberries. I guess even a big patch of mushrooms that I just planted, we just started, between the two of them, that should be plenty of mushrooms to feed me and a lot of other people. So I don't particularly know what I'm gonna do at this location, but we're definitely gonna fill, uh, put wood chips down in here and I probably won't let the the strawberries survive um, or propagate more of them. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video here. This was a fun one for me. We'll talk to you soon.